is the story of a lost neighborhood and of its people who did not want to go. I don't want no money. I want my home. The old man is old. See how the old man is old? No more. That's enough. I don't want to get out. I, I sent my two daughters. They don't want to get out too, because they spent a lot of money. Plenty of money they spent in this place. Do not get nice to nobody. Never. Hi. Welcome to the West End Video Newsletter. Tonight we're going to have an ordinary uh, show. I have uh, somebody that was on the show 10 years ago with his brother who has since passed away. Uh, but we're just going to do a lot of West End rap, talk about the old tent neighborhood, and do what we do when we usually meet other West Enders in different parts of town or groupings of anything. And today we have Frank and Solo. Uh, matter of fact, in the, in the West End they, have, they had a famous fish store. And on Green Street. On Green Street, yeah. right. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, I'll tell you, Jimmy, like I was telling you before, I dream of the West End mm -hmm. quite often. Yeah. And, and it's just my house. There's nothing else. Yeah. And I go in and I get lost. <laughs> I come out and I'm lost. Yeah. But I, when I think, often, when I'm driving or right. something, I will think of incidents that happened in the West End. And, yeah. and people must think I'm, I'm out of my <laughs> mind, you know? Yeah. Like, you know, I got to tell you a story about Tilly O'Reilly. Do you remember Tilly O'Reilly? I think I do. From the Rail family. Right, I'm that's sure. the Rail family. I know the Rail family. Well, Tilly O was a little younger than I and Lenny Lanza. Mm -hmm. Lenny and I used to run away from home a lot. <laughs> and we used to be starving because we had no money. <laughs> so <laughs> Tilly O used to have money in his shoe. shoe. So we were in Knott Station. Yeah. And we bump into me and Lenny is in that station. We were trying to stuff toilet paper in the telephones. So, so can, okay. we could, remember we yeah, used to yeah, stuff yeah. the toilet paper in the telephones to get the change. So the change wouldn't return. Yeah. Right. That's the only way we could eat. <laughs> so Tullio comes and Lenny says to me, he's always got money in his left shoe. Yeah. He says, ask him for a buck. We'll go to Dan's. Yeah. Across the street from that station on Nashua Street okay. was Dan's Diner. Right. And you could get three pancakes and a cup of coffee for 45 cents. Mm -hmm. So I says, Tilly, give us a buck. I got no money. <laughs> Tilly, give me a buck. I'll give it back to you. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. give me a buck. I got no money. So Lenny says, jump him. <laughs> so we jump him. I <laughs> grab him by the neck and I got him on the floor. And Lenny's trying to take his shoe <laughs> off. <laughs> and he's hollering, police, police, yeah. help, police. So there's an old lady there with a cane. Yeah. This is the truth. And she's screaming, police, police, <laughs> they're robbing the poor kid, please. <laughs> so Lenny finally gets his shoe off and he takes a buck. That's all we took was a buck. Yeah. So he says, Tilly, I owe you a buck. And we run out the door. Yeah. He gets up and he says to the woman, shut up, you old man. <laughs> they're friends of mine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is stuff, you know. He's trying to, yeah, this, he's this is the way we yeah, were, yeah. you know. I think of these things that, that yeah. really and truly make me laugh. Something, it's Phil Otto. Oh, Phil. Phil Otto, yeah. Tony Otto. Yeah. I told you the story about the, the uh, Tony Otto being, working for Shaw's. Yeah, right. So, you want me to tell it sure. again? Sure. Right. Tony was a, Tony belonged in, politics or, or on the stage. Which entertainment, or, yeah. Entertainment somewhere, because Tony was the right. most talented man I knew from the yeah. West End. And this guy is going to come in, and he was, uh, Tony was a big buyer right. for Shaw's. Mm -hmm. So Tony says, oh, here comes that pain in the eye. Yeah. He says to the secretary, tell him I died. Yeah. Tell him I died. Tell him I'm, I'm Dead. deceased. <laughs> yeah. So the guy comes in and he says to the secretary, can I talk to Tony Otto, please? She says, uh, Tony died. He passed away. He says, when? She says, four or five days ago. Oh, he says, I'm sorry to hear that. And he leaves. Mm -hmm. Two weeks later, this guy shows up again. He says to the girl, uh, can I talk to Tony Otto, please? She says, I tell you, two weeks ago, he died. Yeah. Oh, he says, I forgot, I'm sorry. And he leaves again. Two weeks later, he comes back again. 
He says, Tony Otto, can I talk to Tony Otto, please? She says, what the hell's the matter with you? Yeah. Are you stupid? Are you retarded? I told you three times, he's dead. Yeah. The guy says, I know, I know, but I love hearing it. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you remember. We had Tony on the show once, way, way when we started. I think the seventh or eighth show. We've done 175 of them so far, but way back when we yeah. first started. Yeah, we yeah. had Tony on. And it was oh, he used, to, he used to tell stories about yeah. uh, Tabashnik oh, with a pencil yeah. on his ear. Well, I guess we, uh, Tabashnik was, I guess nowadays you'd call him, he's a little mental retarded or, you know, he's the uh, homeless person or whatever you want to call him. And he used to dress in like sort of rags with the uh, pants with a rope tied around yeah, his thing. Yeah, and a pencil tied on pencil his tie. And he had a three-string mandolin. Yeah, a three-string mandolin. Go ahead. <laughs> he, uh, he would get angry. You know, he got yeah. cheated a lot of money. Oh, did he? In his I, youth. That's, I, what, I, that's what drove him crazy. Yeah, okay. He got cheated out of a lot of money. And uh, I think it was someone in the family that did it. Yeah. I don't know the real story, story, but I know that he got cheated. Yeah. Because uh, the, the Jewish people used to support him, right? And uh, which I thought was nice. The Causeway, Causeway Deli. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm, yep. And I thought it was very nice. So he's walking across Cambridge Street one day, and uh, Joy Street and Cambridge Street, where mm -hmm. the police station was. And the woman probably was stepping on the gas or something, but whatever she did, he started banging on her car. Yeah. Well, the woman was petrified. Yeah. Well, it turns out that the woman's hu husband was a big shot judge. She uh, goes up to the police station. She t uh, identifies herself. And she says, I want to know the ma that man. Do you know? He's mm -hmm. So he says, well, that's, we know who he is. And he's, he's a little mentally yeah. disturbed right now. And, but he won't harm you. Yeah. So she tells her husband they had him committed to Mattapan State Hospital right. in Dorchester. So Johnny Fishy, I know you remember him, he used to yeah. live on the hill. Johnny Fishy used to make deliveries to the Mattapan right. State Hospital. Right. I guess it was, uh, I don't know if it was uh, food or whatever it yeah. was, but Johnny made a delivery about every two weeks. So he walks in, he looks down the corridor, and who does he see? Tabashnik. Mm -hmm. Now, we, we called him ALT. Right. We didn't call him Tabashnik. Right. We called him ALT. So he knew it was him because he had the piece of string wrapped around his ear with the pencil dangling down. Yeah. And he hollers out, ALT. And Tabashnik looks at him, he says, say, boy, they got you too, huh? <laughs> Yeah. Oh my God! What I'm sitting on the corner one day, right? And he's walking down the street. I yell out, "Hey, Tobashnik, how are ya?" He says, "How are ya?" That's in the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> <laughs> he used to go. Uh, do you remember uh, Muscatolo, Vinny Muscatolo? Right, 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 right. He had a sister, yeah. and she felt sorry for him. Mm -hmm. So every morning before she went to work, she he would ma wait for her downstairs. Right. And, they would go to the White Rose across on Cambridge Street. It was mm -hmm. on Cambridge Street next to the 5 and 10. There used to be a 5 and 10 there. There was a White Rose there. It was a coffee shop. And she'd have uh, a cup of coffee and a donut, and she'd buy yeah. him one. So the guy comes in, and he says, I, I forget her name. I think her name was Jerry. He says, Jerry. Yeah, Jerry, it's Jerry. He says, Jerry, uh, your brother, do you? So Tobias, look, she says, Say, boy, you don't, don't you see we're dining here? <laughs> <laughs> and he threw the guy out. <laughs> yeah, Jerry's still around. Jerry, uh, matter of fact, I see her at the West End Mass just recently. Yeah. Yeah, she's a good person. Matter of fact, she was working for uh, Disney Studios as a, as a secretary uh, about 10 years ago. And uh, she, she's the one that gave uh, London Nimoy one of our newsletters at that oh, time. Oh, for God's sake. And, and it just sort of evolved. And yeah. he's been on the list since. He's... He's been supportive of the West Ender and the West End too. Oh so my was, God. Yeah, but she was she was a secretary. And you know, when when my father when my father and mother had to leave the West End, there was a building. He they wanted to get my father was the last one on Green Street. Okay. And my father wouldn't leave, even mm. though we had a house in Jamaica Plain on 
on uh, Spring Park Avenue. We had a six-family home. Mm -hmm. And the, the apartment was empty. Pa, I want you to mm -hmm. move. My father wouldn't go. So uh, the contractor got pretty disturbed because he wanted to build, knock yeah. the building down. Yeah. So he says, I'll get that little guinea out. Mm -hmm. So he breaks the water main. Now, I know you never went to my house in the West End, but we had a cellar. Right. And there was a furnace and everything. And then we had another sub-cellar that went yeah, down. There was a lot of them like that, yeah. 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 Well, the cellar got flooded. The yeah. sub-cellar got flooded. Yeah. Five feet of water. Yeah. So my brother Guy and I used to go to my mother's house in Green Street, mm. you know, to make sure she was all right, because they were the only ones there. Yeah. So my mother says, your father's gone crazy. She says, please, go down and talk to him. Mm. I says, what's the matter, Ma? She says, I don't know. He's, I think he's swimming in the water. Yeah, you're a pool. <laughs> so we go down the cellar. Sure enough, we're standing by there, and the cellar's flooded. All of a sudden, the head comes up, my father. <laughs> says, Pa, what are you doing? Get away from me. Get out. Naturally, in Italian. Mm. Down the water he goes. So my brother Guy says, what the hell is the matter with it? I says, I know what it is. He's looking for money. <laughs> he's got some money hidden somewhere, somewhere, and he's looking for it. So my father finally comes up. I says, Pa, Pa, come here, come here. We're your sons. We're not going to rob you. I don't have a gun. Yeah. Tell me. I know you're looking for money. Yeah. Let me help you. <laughs> me and my brother will help you. Yeah. Tell me, where is it? He says, I got $55,000 in the Lupini barrel. <laughs> me and my brother guy, <laughs> right in the water. Yeah. Laugh. We didn't find it. Yeah. But what he did was, he had waterproof bags. Okay. And he, for the fish. Right. You know, because, right. so he put the money he laid it out in, in one of the big bags, and he mm. flipped it over, and he had some tape. The, in them days, they used to sell a tape that you could wrap around pipes. They claimed it yeah. stopped the pipe from leaping, right. but it wasn't true. It didn't. Yeah. But my father put it in that bag, then he put it in another one, yeah. and then he put some goosenecks, the lead goosenecks from yeah, Dallas right, right, yeah. you know, from, from uh, gutters. Yeah. And he... A barrel, a 55-gallon barrel, has a rim on the top. Right. And you need a special hammer. It's got a groove in it. And yeah. You put the hammer and you tap it. And that ring comes off. The top right. ring comes off. Then you can take the top panel out. Yeah. So he puts the bag in the Lupini barrel. Now, a Lupini is a... It looks like a uh, M&M. Right. A large, yellow M&M. Mm -hmm. We used to chew right. on them. It's a, and you have to soak it in water. Right. So he puts the bag in the Lupini barrel, puts the cover back, puts the ring back on, and hammers it down. Now, I used to sit on this barrel all the time. I'd say <laughs> to my brother guy, I can smell this money down here. Yeah. There's money here. Yeah. I can smell it. Yeah. And I'd say, let's look up in the shelves. Let's yeah. look up there. Maybe yeah. we can tell by if yeah. he touches something, it'll be clean. Yeah. That'd be, but well, he used to dust the whole cellar because yeah. he didn't trust the Pope. <laughs> he would he wouldn't trust he wouldn't yeah, trust the president right. of the United States. So he had the fifty five thousand dollars in that barrel. So I says to him, Pa, what if you died? I'm not gonna die. I says, Pa, you can't live forever. Yeah. I says, What if you died? We we would have never known. Yeah. And and before that, when he was uh, You threw the whole barrel out, right? I would have thrown the whole barrel out. I wouldn't have eaten it. Yeah. But not knowing that there was right. that kind of money in it. My father one time had a, a, an attack. He's holding his right side. Mm -hmm. And he, he couldn't stand up. Yeah. So I said, Pa, you better, we better go to the hospital. Leave me alone. I said, Pa, we've got to go to the hospital, Pa. Something wrong with you. You can't even stand up. You, yeah. You're walking around like a... So we finally talked him into going to the hospital. Yeah. So we take him to the hospital. The doctor comes in, examines him. He comes out to the hallway and he says to me and my brother guy, he says, I suspect a ruptured appendix. 
He says, because, yeah. you know, his breadth, and I think he's given up a little bile. Yeah. He says, you know, this is serious. The man can die. He says, I think you better go in and make, make your peace. peace with him. So I go in and I says, Pa, my brother guy says, you tell him. I ain't telling yeah. him. He'll whack me. <laughs> so I says, Pa, I want to, you know, I got to talk to you. I says, you got appendicitis. Magia appendicitis. Yeah, what is yeah. appendicitis? I says, it's a piece of gut that rotted and it's broken. Yeah. We gotta, they got to cut it, it and take it out. I says, you got anything you want to tell me? Is there anything you want to tell me? Yeah. So he looks at me. Yeah. The lobsters, a dollar a pound. <laughs> the haddock, fillets, 80 cents. Don't go a dime no, cheaper. cheaper. The calamaris, you got to get 35 cents. I says, Pa, what are you talking about? <laughs> get out of here, he says. Come back tomorrow morning, I'll be here. I'll still be here, he says. Don't call the, I know I'm going to die someday, but you don't call the undertaker today. <laughs> That's the way they were, you know. Phil Odo, you know, you know Phil, you're Phil Odo. Now you meant the appendix, right? Yeah. He, he had an appendix that wasn't broken. It was just releasing crap. Yeah. So it was going through a system, and he didn't know he was in there. He was almost dead. He was in the hospital, he told me, he says, he says, I knew I was sick. I said, why is that? He said, and you know Phil, you know how Phil is, right? He says, because they brought the priest in for extreme unction. He says, and I let him give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> not leave over that. <laughs> let me tell you a funny story. Do you remember Pineapple Stevenson? Yeah, I do. Explain. Pineapple Stevenson used to, was a black kid that lived in the West End who was a boxer. Yeah. Okay. And he was a good, good kid. kid yeah. We all liked him. Yeah. And he was a good boxer. Yeah. And he liked the Odos very much. Right. So someone says, I don't know if it was Vinnie Muscatolo or whoever it was, says, you know, Phil's in the hospital. Mm. So I said, what's the matter? He said, I don't know. He says, well, let's go up and see him. So we get on the elevator. I think he was on the second or third floor. I forget where he was. But it, we had to get in the elevator. Pineapple Stevenson passes gas. Now the elevator's loaded. He looks at the woman standing next to him. He says, Madam, please. <laughs> now she looks at me and, and uh, I think it was Tony. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. <laughs> so uh, the elevator ride was shot. The door opens and he looks at her. He says, some people. <laughs> she starts banging. I didn't do it. I mean, this was the West End. Yeah. You know, somebody from Hollywood should come down and get some of these stories. I think they Pineapple, could. when he was boxing, now Pineapple had a weird way of training because he used to fool around with women the night before and yeah. get drunk. <laughs> he was drunk yeah. constantly. And on drugs. Yeah. And he shot he fought Sugar Hot, who at that time was the number nine contender. Yep. And he lasted nine rounds with him and he was shit faced. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse yeah. my language. Yeah. 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 Oh God. God. He was the funniest thing. We had uh, do you remember Peter De Tulio? He owned a Beacon Hardware on Cambridge yeah, the Street. Yeah, the name sounds very familiar. Yeah. Peter came to me one time and he says Fish, you got to do me a favor. I says, what's the matter, Peter? He says, my cousin John, he says, he's from Italy. He doesn't speak English too good. He says, and he's, he's got some sort of phlebitis or something in his yeah. leg, and he's worried sick. He says, you're good with a joke. Come up, <laughs> talk to him in Italian, talk yeah. to him, yeah. you know, yeah. cheer him up. He says, tell him a couple of dirty jokes or something. So I says, all right. Yeah. For you, Pete, I'll do it. So we go to the Mass General Hospital. Now, Peter's behind me. So I see Emmy. Emmy was Phil Otto's girlfriend okay. at the time. The nurse? Uh, yeah. Because he used to go with a nurse. Yeah. yeah, Emmy. So I says to her, Emmy, could you, could you let me borrow your stethoscope? <laughs> she says, oh. Uh, Fish, what are you going to do? I says, no, 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 this is a joke. I says, uh, Peter's cousin, you know, we're trying to cheer him. All right, she says. Well, there used to be a joke, you know. Yeah. The guy lost his leg, and the guy comes in, he says, I got some, no, the guy was going to lose his leg, and he says, I got some good news and some bad news. So the guy says, what's the bad news? He says, I got to take your leg off. He says, what the hell is the good news? 
He says, the guy in room 317 wants to buy your slippers. <laughs> so I figured I'd pull that on yeah. him in Italian. Yeah. So Peter's standing outside. I walk in the room, and there he is. He sees me. I, uh, by the way, I grabbed the white jacket. Yeah. A little big for me, but I grabbed it. And I got the stethoscope, and I walk in the room. He grabs my hand. He says, hello, daughter, hello, daughter. <laughs> And I, and I start talking to him, and mm -hmm. I, I says, uh, John, I got uh, bad news and I got some good news. Huh? I said, I got some bad news and I got some good news. I said, I got to take your right leg off. He goes, I you the missing you. God help me. Yeah. And he's pounding his chest, yeah. and he falls on the floor. Peter comes in, he says, get out of here before you get arrested. <laughs> I almost give the guy a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you're the guy that sent me there. <laughs> but yeah. this was the humor yeah. of the West End, yeah. where men were men and half the women were, too. <laughs> I used to tell everybody that. <laughs> My brother Guy used to see it all the yeah, time. You yeah, know, when you were mentioned. Now, do we mention that uh, you, your father had a fish store on Green Street? Yeah. Oh, okay. well, yeah. So that all this comes into perspective. Do you remember the Bloods? Yes, yes, I remember them. They were the, the last family right. to leave the West End on Charles Street. I go to this uh, thing. There was Jim Rappaport, who was the head of the Republican Party, debating uh, Joan Menard, who was the head of the Democratic Party. So I'm sitting there listening to it, and uh, all of a sudden some woman gets up and starts screaming at Rappaport, right? You know, good son of a woman. Ma'am, you have to sit down and we'll have Troy out. She keeps it up. You go, Ma'am, you have to sit. Finally, they tell her. So I don't know, get her out of here, right? So she's walking up the stairs and she gets three quarters of the way up, right? She turns around and goes, My name is Blood! Right? I went, Oh, this is Blood's daughter. Oh my God. <laughs> right? Oh my Everybody God. else thinks it's some cryptic message. No, no. <laughs> you know no. What I mean? But that was her name. <laughs> that was her name. You know, like, like, it was just like, you know, yeah. everybody's going, <laughs> What an awful man. Yeah. What an awful yeah. How can he look in the mirror? Yeah. Oh. Uh, I'd like to see him live a long time, but. There's a there's a Jewish saying. May may you have the wealth of the ocean and all the gold in the world, yeah. and it not be enough to pay the doctor. Yeah. That's what I wish him. Yeah. Or how about that? Uh, what was the old Arab one? May you have two wives and one shirt, meaning you're not rich enough to. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, not rich enough to take care of him, so all you'll have is problems. <laughs> yeah. Oh God, God. Yeah. I used to, when I was young, I used to. Uh, the Jewish people used to uh, pay me a nickel or dime. To, oh yeah, to the Orthodox, the, yeah. Yeah, to to light the candle. Yes, yes, yeah. All the stove. And uh, I had a I had a uh, a Syrian friend that taught me how to chant. Okay. And I used to go around, dismay. Tabashna heard me one time, wanted me to go and sing a song yeah. at the synagogue with a yarmulke on, uh, Yishkada, Yishkada, yeah. The, yeah. the prayer yeah. of the dead. Right. I should have went. Yeah, you should. Oh, God. You know, he has, he has a beautiful voice. Yes. He had a yeah. very beautiful voice. He used to sing voice. opera. Yeah, he had a he used very to sing beautiful opera. voice. Yeah. And yeah, he, he, he was very... Yeah. And, and a lot of people took care of him. Yeah. They really took care of him. Like I say, that Causeway Dully, they, whenever he went in there, they gave him free food. He'd sit down at the table and get food. Yeah. I think it said somebody left him money to feed him or something. Right, yeah, right. Somebody, somebody left yeah. a, uh, an inheritance, uh, and uh, he, they couldn't give him money, right. but they could feed him, and if he needed something, you know, yeah, right. they, they could uh, buy it for him. And, uh, well, you know, the guy that owned that deli, was Sonny Rail. Do you remember Sonny yeah. Rail? That was his father-in-law, oh, okay. Levitt. Rita Levitt's oh, father. Okay. Okay. Was a, a, the two brothers owned that restaurant okay. on Causeway Street. Mm -hmm. On the corner of Causeway, it yeah. was uh, near Leverett when mm -hmm. you took a right turn on right, Leverett. Right, right. That, that was Rita Levitt's father. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, Sonny Rail's father-in-law. She had a brother that, mm -hmm. you know, I forget his name. He worked for the post office. The Rayos ended up own, owning a lot of stuff. They ended up yeah, in, in yeah, gas he, stations. He, yeah, yeah, he there. bought a nice building on Charles Street, and who would believe that 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 property would go that much? I begged <laughs> my father to mm -hmm. buy a building. We could have got yeah. it for six thousand dollars. I said, yeah. "Pa, yeah. they're throwing us out of this section." My father said, "They're going to throw us out of that section too." Yeah. So what's yeah. the sense of buying it? Yeah. What do I got to get a heartache for? Because yeah. he only paid thirty-eight hundred for his house back in the thirties. Yeah. But he spent a fortune fixing so, it up. Yeah. 
I'll never forget what the guy came that day and he says, here's a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. uh, and he says to the tenants, from now on, you pay the... BRA. BRA. Yeah. And I says to him, what? What the hell are you talking yeah. about? My father owns the bill. No, yeah. we're taking it by eminent domain. Yeah. And he hands me a paper and it says for the sum of one... They didn't even give us the dollar. That's what they call quick take. They didn't give us the yeah. dollar. And somewhere down the line, they pay you for the house. Somewhere like two, three years later. They still do that, by the way, you know. I thought that was, I, eminent domain was always used for government projects. It had to be a public use, yeah. okay? Then it became a public purpose. And a public purpose could mean that taking down a slum. Then they went to a public benefit, which even watered it down. <laughs> now they got public benefit. And they've even watered down public benefit. It's they basically, as long as they can, if some city agency or state agency, right, decides that they can make more money out of your property by building like uh, a 10-story building or they can take your house. Why can't we do that to Rappaport's house? Give it's, him a buck. It's funny. And take the house. It's funny because under, under, under uh, Flynn's administration, right, uh, Paul Barrett, who was, one, uh, he was the BRA, head of the BRA uh, just before Flynn left, he, we were talking, we went out for lunch once because he was a great guy, right? Really yeah. Had, you know, we had, we had Flynn administration, we really, really had good people there, and we had good close contacts with all the people. He says, let's go down Charles River Park and walk around pointing at all the things. He says, I'll point at all of them, and we'll say, eminent domain? Yeah, we'll take that one. <laughs> oh, God. 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 Well, we're coming to the end of the show. It's, uh, we got a minute left, so if there's anything you'd like to say in this last remaining Well, minute. I'll tell you, um, I, I tell my grandchildren all the time, I was born and raised in the West End, and I'm very, very proud of being a West mm -hmm. Ender. And That's when right. I see the people from the West End, the heart calls. Yeah. I go to the Meadow Glen yeah. every night. Meadow Glen Mall. Mall. 10 o'clock on Tuesday morning. Th Thursday morning. Thursday morning. You, you, can, you can meet a whole bunch of, uh, yeah. uh, well, your age group. Uh, yeah. And, and, they, they, and I'm so yeah. proud to, yeah. to be a part of that. Yeah. And I wish someday, that's, that's the last thing I'm going to say, that I wish someday... Somebody like Lenny Nimoy or somebody come down and gather our stories. Yeah. And they could put it into a book because it's unbelievable. That's right. That's right. I always, you know, I, I always wanted to write this book. I almost did it at one point because I had some spare time. I was going to call it Tales of the Urban Village. Oh, that's a good idea. You know what I mean? Because we were the original urban village. That yeah. was, again, called us, and now everybody calls themselves urban villages. But we were the, first the urban original. village and urban villages. Okay, mm. and I, but I never got around to it. I was going to take like all the early uh, stories from the early West Enders. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a good idea. Do Why don't you do it? Uh, I don't have you the time at this point. Uh. That goddamn museum got, s and it's yeah. not bad. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. I, you know, it's just that it, it sucked up all my free time. You know, I forgot that. What was it? What, when was the the uh, time at the hilltop? Uh, last Sunday. I forgot yeah. all about it. Yeah. I guess we're coming to the end of it. So. Frank, thanks for coming. And, okay, Jim, a uh, pleasure. I'll My see you. pleasure. And I'll see you people you at the next West End Video Newsletter. <laughs> okay, Jim. Take care. You know what we forgot to talk about? The right.